this is a 40 foot RV and I don't even need any special license to drive it, which is kind of wild because I really feel like you should have to have a special license to drive. No, no chance. You can drive that. That's a buzz to me again. Without any type of special license. Oh, Americans. Kind of love it. But <laughs> that's crazy to me. What's up, my friend? Today I'll we'll be reacting to European tries American RV life for the first time. I have no idea what I should expect on this one. But before I go into that, can I ask you for one thing? If you can leave a like, thank you so much, my friend. This is the best way to show support. If you can subscribe, well, in that case, forget about it. You make my day. Have that in consideration. Now, link for the original video in my description. You guys really end up recommending this one quite a lot. So let's play it. Welcome to my new rig. This is a 40-foot RV. I've seen these things driving down highways in the USA, but... No, wait, what is this? RV? This is a buzz. In my country, this is a buzz. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm joking a bit, but that thing is huge. But they don't exist back home in Europe. God, it's so tight. I can't really relate to them because I like my camping minimalist. Overlanding. Don't really get to shower very often. But since I'm all about being open to new experiences, oh I want to understand the appeal of RV life. A remote sure. controlled bidet. Oh yeah. Ah! Especially now that my truck is at the mechanics. So come along and see how this European navigates the quirks of RV life. Well, I'm covered in diesel. And ultimately, what I think of this all-American version of camping. Okay, That's let's terrifying. see it. All right, let's go into my new... Oh my God, I'm sorry. I know I already said this, but this... This thing is massive. No, really. Our buzzes here are not that different than this. There's <laughs> just a bit... Uh, okay, more windows and I assume more seats. Okay, I would not even be able to drive this because I don't have uh, the license to, to drive such a big uh, um, vehicle. It's kind of amazing that he actually has that, but uh, because a lot of Europeans would not be able to do it. Mansion on wheels. Oh my God, check it out. It's huge. Okay, we're going to take a tour of this thing later on. First, we need to figure out how to drive it. It's so strange that it's all the way here. There's oh man, but even the, the, the seats, they look very comfortable. Okay, I like this. I really do. This way. Oh my God, I am a bus driver. There's drive, neutral, and reverse. Got it. Any RV driving tips for me? Um, Don't crush. Both hands on the steering wheel. The wind is a huge factor. I believe it. Oh my it. god, I've never driven anything this big. This is a 40 foot RV. And I don't even need any special license to drive it, which is kind of wild because I really feel like you should have to have a special license to drive. No, it. no chance. You can drive that. That's a buzz to me again. Without any type of special license. Oh, Americans. Kind of love it. But <laughs> that's crazy to me. Oh, man, let's run it back. I, did I understood that totally correct? V. And I don't even need any special license to drive it, which is kind of wild because I really feel like you should have to have a special license. Okay, again, you guys know why I put some jokes here and there, but let's be real here. You should, you should have a, a special license for that because approaching... Uh, the road with a, a, a vehicle like this is much different than with a normal uh, vi vehicle <laughs> car. <laughs> right, my friends? I mean, you can be in a lot of problems with, with, uh, with a vehicle like this. Uh, I think a license would be important, honestly. But okay, I mean, not my country and I respect that and I kind of would love to try <laughs> to, to drive one of those. Since to drive a vehicle of this size. <laughs> the first challenge of the day is <laughs> doing a three-point turn and getting out of this lot. <laughs> um, this was supposed to be a uh, three-point turn. It is currently a five-point turn. I'm estimating another two points. No chance. 
That's amazing. <laughs> I think I can make this a 10 point turn. Go yeah. on. <gasps> yes! Congrats. What I really want to do next before getting on the highway is practice driving her around. That's a good idea. All right. I'm gonna practice some turns. <laughs> oh yeah, I just want to put it out there that I paid 500... Okay, but... Um... I will, I will run a bit back. Don't, don't worry, my friends. Um, but uh, is this... Uh... To be, I, I'm assuming this may be the biggest one that you guys have in America. Probably there is RVs that are a bit smaller. Here, we don't have this at all. I mean, we have this, but we call them buzz. Um, what we have is basically caravans. In, in, I'm not, do, do you guys know that expression, caravans, right? Um, but yeah, expression, in this case, the words, but. Okay. Oh. Sometimes. Honestly, thank you so much for recommending uh, this uh, this video because this is amazing to me. <laughs> to me, this is amazing. Oh yeah, I just want to put it out there that I paid five hundred and fifty dollars in insurance for the two days that I'm driving this thing. All right, backing up. Oh my god, she is huge. Oh, oh can't see anything. Oh my god. Gentle. Gentle. Come on, come on, little girl. You can do it. You can do it. No, but that stuff have cameras. 100%. No chance he's doing that just looking at the mirrors. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. you can see that yes, he's looking at yes, the camera. Yes. I'm so proud. Okay. Very good. Ready. Let's do it. I really struggled with where to drive my giant Death Star. The highway would be a bit scary because of the trucks and the speeds, but the back roads, would I even fit? Oh, I love the music. Behind me. <laughs> Worried about my size, I opted for the highway. So a few impressions from driving a 40 foot RV on a highway <laughs> is you so are crazy. so aware of how giant this thing is. Every time I pass under a bridge, I'm like, <laughs> it's like ducking. So it feels like I'm not gonna oh fit. Boy, that's and then true. everything, every single car that passes me feels tiny. You know, even those guys. Wild camping is not an option in this thing. Oh, that one is also big. Long. My palms are sweaty. So I'm driving 50 miles to a special RV park that's suitable for giant rigs. Okay, kind of beautiful. I'm actually falling in love with this uh, uh, machine that you guys call uh, RV. I believe it's a recreative uh, vehicle, right? Something like that, but I kind of like it. Kind of sexy. No, more and more like. people take holidays in RVs and camper vans all around the world. In the United States alone, 25 million Americans RV every single year, but it comes with a hefty price tag. The class of RV that I am driving costs an average of $400,000 to buy. Okay. No, 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 no. What? 400? That's... Dude, in Portugal, in Portugal, you can buy an amazing house with that money. Okay. You know what? I was thinking about... I was looking at that and thinking, what if... When I go to America, instead of going to motels and stuff like that, or R&Bs, I just get one of those. Rent, of course. But probably it's too expensive. I guess I'm glad I got that insurance after all. Yeah. All right, here we are. Oh, how do I get in here? Oh, God, it's so tight. <laughs> Jeez, these air brakes. This is not the end because I still have to back into my spot. So I'm just going to go check in. How did I do? Great. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> it was so scary. It was terrifying. Welcome to my park up for the weekend. This is just a run of the mill KOA campsite, the kind you might actually stay at if you live in an RV. Okay. I think I'm done. So, RV campsites are often not cheap. I paid $160 for two nights. Granted, that includes electricity, water, sewage disposal, games and entertainment, a pool, toilets, cable TV, internet, a playground, but still not cheap. Yeah, not cheap, but uh, seems like a fun place. 
part of the reason why I wanted to get this specific RV, this ginormous 40 foot RV, is because I'm obsessed with slide outs. Now, in case you're not from the US and you don't know, slide, slide outs. outs in an RV are those things to the side over there. So let's slide mm. it out. Oh, this is crazy wait, technology. Wait, I'm giving you a tour of this place tomorrow. But for now, I just need to expand the last two. Oh, this is amazing. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, that's cool. So wild. Here's the next step. I need to plug this giant thing into the oh oven. that's a tra that's a transformer i'm i'm realizing that right now that's not a oh, okay that's not a bus that's a transformer never mind we are back let's hear so they have water they have electrical they have all this fancy stuff but i'm not totally sure how to plug it all in it opens up Ooh. the power is on we don't currently need water because we still have a full tank okay. and this unassuming tiny little thing that is something i'll do in two days from now and that is the sewer you know one of the things mm. i love the most about rv culture are the names that some of these rvs have because usually they're either based on some really dreamy remote location that people dream of Okay. Or they have a name that evokes like a sense of adventure and nature and power sometimes. Okay, question. I believe this is the first question, my friends, or the real first question, better saying it. Anyone, anyone watching this video have one of those or ever drive at one of those? If so, tell me in the comments. Is that a, a, an amazing experience? Uh, do you recommend it or, or not? And um, yeah, I mean, that's um, honestly, that seems like a really good idea to, to go uh, in vacation. And this is living the life. I'm sorry. This is, this is one of my dreams. If I had a lot of money, no, if I had a lot of money, I would be doing different things. Never mind. But if I had a good amount of money, maybe still another things. But even, okay. For forget the, the money, the, the money, the, the money part. I would love to do this uh, this type of stuff for sure. One hundred percent, I would. So let's have a little walk around and see what some of these guys are called. The Mighty Crusader, Montana, Reflection, and of course, how could we forget the Four Winds, the Greyhawk, the Arctic Fox AF. AF means something a little bit different to me, but let's go with Arctic Fox. The Colorado, ladies and gents. Oh, I love Colorado. And I also love Montana. I love America in general. Ooh, I would, I would have one with Texas. But I'm not from Texas. Portugal. Oh, that would be actually weird, right? Maybe not. South Wind. The Flagstaff. Stealth. Stealth. And of course, you've got the wolf but Hey guys, I thought I'd jump on here real quick to let you know that over on Patreon, which is my subscription only page. By the way, I know this is the sponsored part, but so far, great, great video. I I'm really enjoying this one. I've just started releasing a new series of videos called the Director's sure. Commentary Series. In these videos, I take you behind the scenes of all of my YouTube videos going forward. I kind of show you some of the behind the scenes okay. you're looking at. This, this was like an hour of my life where I was so stressed out. Share some anecdotes <laughs> and stories from a kind of insider's perspective. You're probably wondering who G is. <laughs> we'll get to that. Yeah, who G is? Actually, I thought about that. I've given you a deeper, um, more personal and intimate understanding of all the work and all the adventure that goes into making every single video that I post here on YouTube. You know what? Honestly, I kind of went into this experience thinking, oh God, oh, this is so, I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna like this. It's too much. It's just so over the top. But actually, um, I really loved it. If you want to access it, if you're interested, go over to my Patreon page. Um, I really like yeah, her, by the like, way. Yeah, he's, her videos you know what, are amazing. The most amazing thing about all of this is that you have an entire kitchen. It's like a freaking gas stove. There's a microwave, there's a sink. So I'm making 
a gourmet dinner. Now, keep in mind, my gourmet. Uh, Am I crazy or those RVs, they are better homes than, uh, you know, a lot of people homes? <laughs> For sure, right, my friends? Those are tremendous. For a little bit. For example, it includes these butter and herb smashed potatoes. Oh, that could be good. They're powdered. Woo! Ooh, that's a big burger. Okay, I'm digging this actually. Some Finish. veggies. Spinach. Potatoes. <laughs> I think. I would eat that. I would. 100% I would. Look at that burger. Mm. I think it's gourmet. Is it gourmet? Pretty gourmet. Right? Kinda. More or less. Okay, well, I will make a critique right now. The chairs, they look better than the sofa, the couch. Am I crazy? It's such a lovely book. It's about a seagull who broke away from his flock in order to learn to fly perfectly. And here he is speaking to his flock upon his return. He spoke of very simple things. That it is right for a gull to fly. That freedom is the very nature of his being. That whatever stands against that freedom must be set aside, be it ritual or superstition or limitation in any form. Set aside, even if it be the law of the flock, the only true law is that which leads to freedom. There is no other. Okay, that was kind of beautiful. I was making fun. Okay, no, no, that was kind of beautiful. God damn it. <laughs> Wait, what was... Oh, popcorn, okay. Holy moly. The microwave knows automatic that's popcorn. No, I know. I, I assume that's a program, but <laughs> imagine. In America, that's possible. I can't believe I'm in a car making popcorn. <laughs> Dude, this is amazing. Again, jokes aside, this is... You can live there the entire year and have a tremendous life. Do you agree with that? Do you agree with that? By the way, should I react to more videos basically about uh, our life, vlogs or stuff like that? If so, put me in the comments the number. You know what? This will be a very specific number. Only the ones that are watching will be aware. 57. Yeah, 57. Gruesome. Now. Wallpaper. Adjective. Now. And of course, the bedroom alone is bigger than my entire truck. And I'm gonna give you a full tour. Dude, the bi that bed is bigger than mine in my, in my house. What? Of the RV tomorrow, but for now I am exhausted. I think like learning how to drive this thing, then driving her, then setting up was a little bit stressful for me, I gotta say, because I had no clue what I was doing. Okay. So I am ready for bed. Sure. Good night. This morning, I'm off for a run, but I just realized that driving this giant thing to the trailhead is not gonna happen. I guess that's why most RVers have backup cars. And this is G's truck, which he's lending me for a couple of hours. Okay. I guess I have to go to the Patreon to know who is the G guy, but um, if anyone knows, please tell me. <laughs> I'm actually kind of curious. You say Utah, I guess most people think Red Rocks, Zion National Parks and Moab. But this, this is also Utah. And it's pretty spectacular. Utah is especially beautiful. Especially out here, where it's just you and the landscape. Oh, come on, my friends, America. In this type of stuff, forget about it. America is, is just so beautiful. No matter the state, there is something I've been realizing. Do you guys know, fun fact, that snows a lot in Utah? I end up learning this in a, a different video. All done, and now I get to do something that I almost never do in Odyssey because it's just such okay. a hassle. I'm about to take a warm shower. <laughs> It's cold. It's cold. No. no. Christmas, so Having a proper shower is just one perk I've been enjoying in the RV. 
Let me show you everything else. Hey, I'm Ava. Welcome to my crib. Come on over. <laughs> <laughs> this here is my cockpit. This is the living space. We've got oh, tons this of storage so on good. both sides, right here, right here. We've got seating room enough for like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten people. So guess I actually wonder if this is those things the RVs are popular here. No, not popular. If they are available here, if they will be popular. I think they, this may may makes a bit more sense for Americans since the country is so big and you can be on the road for, you know, years probably. <laughs> but um, yeah, this is tremendous, man. I think Americans are a bit spoiled sometimes, my friends, because you take all of those things for guarantee. And um, for me, this is insanity in a Let's good way. There's a table, full size table. Very nice. This is the kitchen space with a microwave, an oven. Yeah. No, that's a stove. Yeah, there is no oven. What they do with a sink and a full size fridge and freezer. Check this out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No joke better than mine. <laughs> no joke. <laughs> it's completely empty because I brought no food. <laughs> that's a bad idea. Uh, and over here. Let's keep going. Over here, we've got a full size shower cabin. This is the bathroom space. And I'm going to demonstrate that this is indeed a full size shower cabin. It is phenomenal. I'm not going to turn it on right now because I'm fully good clothed, size. But you get it. And here, there is a little, little sink, some mirrors, mm. some vanity lights. And over here, something that you don't get very often in the United States it's called a bathroom. I'm kidding, you do get washrooms, but you don't get bidets very often, I don't think. And Ooh, that's this true, right? toilet here has a remote controlled bidet, which I have used and I have to say it was very pleasant. Anyway, apart from okay. the bidet, we've got another sink and more cupboards here. Onto the bedroom. Now this is pretty phenomenal. It is so deeply insulated because Ooh, that's of all beautiful. the fabric and all the wood that's here that it's very quiet to sleep in and it's a huge king size bed i have no idea what kind of size bed it is but it is oh so very comfortable it's so that's king size i would, I would assume yeah good and this completes the tour of my rv oh wait i forgot about the craziest thing about the rv it's a washing machine oh my Okay, no, 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 no. This is ours. <laughs> Forget about it. It's not a bus. It's ours. It's a Transformers house. Yeah, this is amazing. My God. So you can actually go for a run, do life, and yeah. then literally put the washing machine on. This is what happens <laughs> when you put the washing machine on in the RV. So here's the thing, I've got this RV for a couple of days, just for a weekend, so mm. I don't really know what it's like to live in one, but Kathy and Mike, our neighbors here, have agreed to show me around their RV. This is Kathy and Mike. They've spent five years RVing full-time across the United States. And when I grow up... Ooh, this will be great, great stuff right away, my friends. Those guys, they will share with us tremendous information. Be ready. Up, I want to be like them because these guys are still traveling at 70 plus. Well, we're 72 years old and I don't think we'll be doing it at 80 as far as much traveling. Mm -hmm. but we still might be going on rallies and, and joining other people. For oh, things. that's so nice. Driving from home to some place and staying for a yeah. week and then coming home would yeah. be our next viable option. And what's your favorite? You know what? I love when I see old people still being so happy together. I really love that. Oh, this is tremendous. This is tremendous. Great thing about RVing. Freedom. Yeah. The ability to let's go someplace. So this is your home. And this was the only home we had from 2016 until February of 2021. Now we okay. live in the Sticks and Bricks okay. house half time and this half time. Six can visit, four can stay, two live here. <laughs> so we can have six people in here, two here, two there, and a couple over there, right. and they can visit. We can have four for dinner. Yep. Okay. And then after that, they get to go home because it's ours. Are there, is there anything that you ever miss about like being in a house? Getting more than 10 feet away from each other at times mm. can be an issue. <laughs> How does it compare like living in a house versus living in an RV? Is it comparable, the cost? A month 
in the RV mm -hmm. can be as expensive or inexpensive as you want it to be based on are you driving or did you go in someplace and you're paying to stay there for 30 days? And just based on my, my, my understanding of what we've done for seven years, living in the RV full time was a little more expensive than living in a house. Okay. But oh, wow, really? Okay, I was not expecting that for some reason. I thought, I mean, I'm assuming they own this already. Or are they renting? If they are renting, I guess that would make a lot of sense. Okay. Oh, that made me a bit disappointed, not gonna lie, because I was thinking, maybe I can do this in the future. No, <laughs> this is more expensive than in, in house. Okay. But not much, because when you're not... Actually, let's back a bit. My, my understanding of what we've done for seven years, living in the RV full time was a little more expensive than living in a house. Okay. But not much, because when you're not driving the RV, you're paying for a place to live. Maybe you end up paying a little bit more, but at the same time, you are, it's a lifestyle, right? You're traveling, mm. you're getting yes. that out of it. So you're not living in one spot, fed entry, you're actually getting to experience. You're on vacation all the time. And that wraps up my weekend in an RV. I'm I would love share my that, by the way. You in just a moment, but first, we need to get this baby ready for the road, and that's a challenge in its own right. It's like that nightmare scenario, you know, and like. Okay, that that gives me some anxiety. You know, <laughs> things. No, no, no chance. <laughs> Be careful. You're having a nightmare. You're in a room, and all the walls are closing in on you. Mm. It's kind of like that. Speaking of, has anyone ever made an RV-themed horror movie? Ah! Oh too close. God. I feel like that would be really relatable for a lot of people. <laughs> One last thing before we leave. <laughs> Not the most pleasant, but very much essential. We need to clean out the sewage water. Okay, plug this in. Oh, it does not smell great. It does not <laughs> smell great. Oh no. Oh yeah. Oh my. I hope it doesn't do that once it's flowing, if you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, I, I know what I... <laughs> Okay, good. Should I risk it? I feel like I should just I don't know. go for it. <laughs> okay, grey water. Let's do it. What if this? Oh! Oh shit, it's leaking! <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it's leaking! Oh my god, it smells so bad. Oh my god, what a disaster. <laughs> okay, we've just uh, found a different nozzle, so we've switched it. And hopefully, this is going to be better. And I'm gonna turn on the sewage tank, because <laughs> you only live once. Oh, no! Oh no, it's leaking! A little bit, not too much. Oh, well, oh, whatever. Not the kind of sounds you'd want to hear first thing in the morning. Oh, it smells pretty really bad. Oh, we're done! Oh, thank God. Okay, okay. <laughs> this was okay, okay actually. Oh. Oh, man. <laughs> this is probably the number one reason why I would not. This is the time to call G. I, I'm telling you, call it. I want to live in an RV. Number one and number two. Get it? Kinda. One last thing before returning the Death Star. So obviously because of the size of this thing, you can't just fill her up at any old gas station. You have to take her to a truck stop because that's the only way that it'll fit. <laughs> so we covered about 90 miles during this trip and I'm really curious to see how much gas we've used. I heard that she's a pretty thirsty beast. Okay. So time to pay. This would be crazy, right? <laughs> okay. You know what? To fill all of that, maybe... I have no idea. This probably is a, have a huge tank. I was about to say maybe $100, but that sounds really damn right, my friend. It's still going! Oh my god! god. Still going. 90 miles to be specific. We covered 90 miles. And so far it's costing us. Oh, there we oh, shit! I really thought it was more, actually. Okay. I mean, to be honest, to the car I, I drive here is like 50 to 60. Uh, yeah, translating to dollars, probably that. 50 to 60 dollars. So, and she's very small, so yeah, 
I know the gas prices are expensive, uh, are quite more expensive in Portugal than they are in America, if you guys are not aware, but, uh, and you guys have, <laughs> you guys take gas out of the ground, we don't. Uh, do you guys consider this a lot of money? I mean, this is a good amount of money, don't get me wrong, but uh, I was expecting more um, from my experience. I don't know. <laughs> what a disaster. This is the first time that's ever happened, I swear. <laughs> I thought there was a block when the the when the, the, the tank is full. Holy shit! Well, I'm covered in diesel, and this party cost us 137 dollars exactly. So, would I choose this RV over my little truck? It's so much more comfortable. It. The answer is yes. Uh, but uh, let's continue. Really feels more like an actual house than a vehicle. I can definitely see why people do RV life. It's great. But personally, I prefer the freedom and the flexibility of Odyssey, a truck that I can take absolutely <laughs> No, I'm joking. Maybe she actually prefers that. Absolutely anywhere. So, safe to say, I love my No, and that's a great <laughs> Holy moly, this uh, is even a can do both uh, type of uh, navigation. Uh, but that said, uh, she 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 makes a great point. I mean, uh, that could be a nightmare to 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 drive. It's so big. And this gives way more flexibility. My RV experience, but I'm so excited to get back into Odyssey and go into the mountains once again. Hmm. Coming up next week. Oh, this was so nice, man. Come on, what a great video, my friends. Do you guys agree with me? This was a great video. I mean, no one is watching until the end. I <laughs> so I'm talking alone. But if you are... Um, like in the asking, should I react to more stuff similar to, to this? Uh, I mean, she makes great content, so it will be difficult to find someone with this quality, I'm assuming. But uh, vlog stuff with RVs and stuff like that, like I said, leave the number 57 uh, if you think that's a good idea. But yeah, this was tremendous. I, I had a lot of fun. And that's it for today, my friends. Hope you end up enjoying this video. If that's the case, do not forget to leave a like. Also, consider to subscribe if you are new to my channel. And also, let me remember you about one thing. I have a Patreon community. I put videos there a bit earlier than I put on YouTube. So if you want to support me and have access to early content, go to my uh, Patreon. I will leave a link on my description. Take a look at that. You can also scan the QR code you'll be seeing here. And uh, that's it.